Hey, y'all, welcome back to the show. It's 2023, and we're going to talk about some Instagram trends to be watching for, things that you can practically use with your content this year. My special guest is Sarah Motes, and she's going to talk us through some of the research that she did about this. And we're just going to kind of bat it back and forth based on the recent Instagram trend report. Now, it's no secret that Gen Z dictates Instagram trends because that's who Instagram is targeting. And even if your core audience isn't Gen Z, and I almost want to say, especially if that's not your core audience, You are going to want to pay attention to this information because it's key to how Instagram will share your content. So just know up front that we aren't saying you have to cater to Gen Z. We're saying it's going to go better for your content being seen if you can sift through the information and use what's available and comfortable for you to use. And here's the good news. Instagram is heavily pushing community and connection. And you know, here at Authentic Online Marketing, we're all about community. Why? Community grows opportunity. Yes! Woo-hoo. Woohoo! So now, without further ado, we give you the 2023 Instagram trends to leverage for building your following. Welcome to Authentic Online Marketing with Ruthie Gray. Growing awareness for your blog, podcast, book, or product involves more than dancing to reels and yelling, buy my thing. This show models quality over clamor so you can put your spin on your message and market in a way that feels authentic to you because nobody wants to sound like an infomercial. And now, here's your host, Ruthie Gray. Sarah, take it away. Okay, we got a lot of juicy things here as far as trends go. As Ruthie already mentioned, a lot of the trends are really targeted toward Gen Z. Reason being, they need to get younger people onto the app in order for the app to continue to thrive. That just makes sense. Also, let's define Gen Z real quick. Gen Z is anyone born from 1997 on. Hmm. So think that generation. Um, In this report, we're not really talking about new features coming up on Instagram. There's not really a lot of like life changing new features coming up anyway. Like we're not saying there's a new thing like reels. No, you already know how to do reels. Keep doing them. But your content is going to need to be tweaked or shifted a little bit to go with these Instagram trends specifically targeted toward Gen Z. Now, most of y'all listening to the podcast, I'm guessing Gen Z is not your target audience. However, if you want to continue to get more eyeballs on your content, you're going to need to shift a few things. So um, just, just a quick, broad overview. Like, What does Gen Z even like? If you don't have a Gen Zer in your life, here's a quick insight into the way their brains work. They are very into DIY and thrifting. So think like clothing, recycling, building something themselves versus going out and buying it. A lot of these kids were uh, growing up in the recession, the 2008 recession. It's what they know. They really only know a post 9-11 world. So think Mm -hmm. about everything that's happened since then. That's what they know. Okay. So if you have anything... DIY related, even if you're not into furniture or clothing, think like how to DIY your own podcast setup or just something Mm -hmm. along those lines. Hashtag DIY, all of that could possibly get you more traction. If you do that, like I would love to know the results Mm -hmm. of once you start doing some DIY content, if you see an uptick in your numbers, I think that'd be super interesting. I do too. I like that. Mm -hmm. Like that focus. Number two, they're activists. They are using their social media platforms to support causes and communities, especially as more and more of them are becoming more socially aware. Um, They are very open to diversity. They, you know, they were very young when big major issues became legal. Um, 
They were very young when we had our first Black president. So they are very familiar with diversity and they are willing to fight for even more diversity. Um, They're also very climate conscious, hence also like other DIY and thrifting options. But if you're in like skincare or beauty products, they want good stuff like that to protect them from extreme weather and sun. Like two out of three of them, like that was that was the stat. Um, they're very aware of stuff like that. So, and you know, people, listen, up. I gotta say these Gen Z is very different from the era that I grew up in. Uh, we didn't, we were like, we baked in the sun all the time and <laughs> we, um, went to the tanning beds and we bought all new clothes and, and like a frugal and thrifty that's what our moms did we didn't right. want to do that you know and climate conscious who cares so um you know some of these things are very they're good things mm-hmm. that they're becoming conscious of and so mm-hmm. uh, i mean you know if we can kind of take some of our content and leverage some of that i think mm-hmm. it'd be great What else have you got for us? Absolutely. They are into the metaverse. I have never done anything metaverse-y. Have you? Like created your avatar? No, I do not. I'm not even sure what it is. Yeah. So please help. (laughs) Oh, no. (laughs) I, yeah. All I know is that like, I just don't feel like I have time for a metaverse. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I, I don't need to make a cartoon out of myself. Is that what we're talking about here? I guess so. Yeah. (laughs) But over half of Gen Z social media users plan to get fashion or beauty inspiration from digital avatars or influencers in 2023. So if you're like an influencer, especially in fashion or anything, wow, the metaverse is like what YouTube would have been in 2005. You know, like get on there early and start now because that's, that's the future. Um, And if you think about it, they crave community. However, they've been in a pandemic, like they're Mm -hmm. teenagers who have gone through a pandemic. So they're still trying to get together in a metaverse and social media is how they're like building community. Mm -hmm. They are also craving financial literacy. Side hustles are important to them. They're really wanting to know about investing and crypto has been so huge over the last few years, whether you agree that crypto is a good thing to invest Mm -hmm. in or not, they still want to know about it. And I don't think I was super financially literate when I was a teenager. Like I didn't know how to buy a stock. What the heck's a 401k? I don't know. (laughs) But they're actually wanting to learn about that. And Instagram is a great way to inform people of financial things. So if you're like CPA, if you're into finance, financial counseling or whatever, mm-hmm. this is a great way to reach a younger audience. Mm-hmm. For sure. Mm-hmm. Smart. Two more quick things. They're into cultural cuisine, which is so cool. 68% <laughs> of Gen Z social media users will either continue or would like to try food from another culture after discovering it online. So, you know, earlier I was mentioning diversity. Mm-hmm. They're also diverse in their palates too. Like they have friends from mm-hmm. all over the world, whether they've met them on Instagram or in, in real life, and they want to like try all these different foods. So good for them for not being picky eaters and Sticking with their chicken nuggets. They want to try different things. The moms of the Gen Z's like me are Mm -hmm. like, why couldn't you have had this change in your palate back when I was trying to just feed you spaghetti, you know, and have (laughs) fast meals. (laughs) But uh, because I know my own kids, they are like that. They're they're very exploratory Mm -hmm. in uh, in their palate. So it's Mm -hmm. interesting. So if you're a travel blogger or anything, maybe don't just focus on the sights and the sounds. Also focus on the food. They would probably love that. I would love that. I would love Mm -hmm. to see international foods too. Um, The final thing is Gen Z expects. They expect, and I maybe you've done this too. I have kind of started to expect this as well. I expect my favorite influencers to branch out into other forms of media. Mm Mm-hmm. Like if I follow someone on Instagram, I just don't want to follow them on Instagram. I want to get more of their content via YouTube or a podcast or something like that. Yes. So branching out is going to be huge. 
That is huge. It's already huge, um, which is why I made the leap back in 2020 to podcast. And I know a lot of our people in our um, insider community and our mentorship and our authentic online marketing school have seen that that is the wave of the future is to get on the air or on YouTube. And a lot of them are repurposing podcasts to YouTube. I kind of went ahead that way myself uh, in 2023. So it's good to diversify. Please don't freak out about it if you're just now getting a hang of Instagram. Mm -hmm. Don't freak out, but keep it in mind um, that it is a good move to make going forward. Yes, absolutely. So over the next 12 months, there's going to be a lot of stuff happening on Instagram as far as ways that you can get more reach and get your content in front of more people. I have five things here. Ruthie, are we good to just jump right on in? Let's jump in. Let's jump see in. where we go. Okay. Let's do it. Let's do it. Number one, content is still king. So creators are creating more true and unfiltered material, raw, honest posting, like posting in real time and showcasing less curated streams. I am so happy about that. Yay. If yes. I had a clapping um, thing, you know, like a button right oh, yeah. now, let's clap. I would be doing that. Absolutely. Woohoo. Woohoo. Woo yes. <clears throat> yes. And I know like reels take a lot of time, but if you think about like, 2018, 2017 Instagram, like you had to pay a photographer hundreds of dollars to get beautiful custom stock photo like photos for your business. And you had to edit them like a reel, you can just make a reel. Mm -hmm. And that's what they want. So it exactly. is kind of saving and time and money. That's what we're trying to teach you over here at Authentic Online Marketing is just start. You don't have to have a great big giant studio. You don't have to have all the ring lights. You don't have to have a perfect background. Just start with what you have. Yes. Uh, rest in peace, IGTV. That's gone. Mm -hmm. Let's say oh. goodbye to IGTV. <laughs> and reels, reels are still the way to go. Thanks to an aggressive algorithm push. Reels have become yes. the cornerstone of the modern Instagram experience. They just, that's where they are. They are. That's, that's just how it is, folks. Yep. We got to jump it. on that <laughs> Reels bandwagon. <laughs> yes, you definitely do. <laughs> uh, number two, AR effects, augmented reality effects. Okay. So what are those? Augmented mm. reality is just like a, a filter that just changes the way reality looks on your screen. So, I mean, you all have been using filters for years, but I don't know if you've noticed, they've just gotten a little weirder over time. It seems mm -hmm. like, like you can have a mm -hmm. filter that makes it look like your eyes are closed. Like, it's just like, why yes. would you do that? But they're a thing. So according to this report, utilizing filters like that in your stories makes them more engaging for users, probably because people are looking at them longer. Um, and it encouraged them to try them out on their own accounts. Hmm. And then also using things that you've probably already been using, like interactive elements like polls, quizzes, emoji sliders are comparable hmm. to using the AR effects as well. Okay, I'm going to get me some giant eyelashes. Let's see yeah. how that goes. <laughs> yeah. I'm wondering if you can still like use just the more natural looking AR effects, you know, that just kind of make it look like you have a nice layer of makeup yes. on or whatever. I'm yes. I'm sure those would probably still work. And it probably depends on who your target audience is, I would think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. Like my target, I don't think they're going to like me have it looking like a cartoon character. No. You know. No, we would swipe on by. Probably. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> um, number three. Personalized hashtags. Do as, as if you have been with Ruthie for any amount of time, you know that hashtags are important mm -hmm. and they're still relevant, people. They're still relevant. I'm just preaching what she's already been telling you. Mm -hmm. um, so do some research into what hashtags are the most relevant for your brand that can change your engagement rate drastically. So I think what mm -hmm. they mean by personalized hashtags isn't like, Hashtag Ruthie Gray, because that's super niche. I think they mean more of like right. hashtag Instagram hacks or 
whatever your industry may be. Right. Or even hashtag um, your location, your city or your state Mm -hmm. and things like that. So hashtags do not get that much reach on a regular photo Mm -hmm. post. So I wouldn't spend a lot of time researching those, you know, maybe two or three or five. Mm -hmm. But really where they really still play in is in the reels. That's how you rise to the top of the hashtag hub in reels. Mm -hmm. Because if you if you research a hashtag, if you tap on that hashtag, you'll see that there is somebody at the front. Their reel is longer than everyone else's. That's because they have risen to the top of that hashtag hub. So that's why they're still relevant. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yep. Enough said. <laughs> Hashtags, they're important, guys. Use them wisely. Mm-hmm. Okay. So number four is influencers. More people are following genuine and real influencers who live the average everyday lifestyles praise the lord in contrast Mm -hmm. to the picture perfect keeping up with the kardashian lifestyles led by celebrity influencers i love this so much like almost every influencer i follow on instagram is like okay like let's define influencer i guess like when i think of like a big influencer i'm thinking like 50k or more followers Mm -hmm. like that's what i think of like a big ish influencer i guess and they're all like normal people Mm -hmm. who happen to just like repeat their message and help people it's great right so authentic online Mm -hmm. marketing Mm -hmm. yes yes and they're like average moms like i'm cleaning my house here's the cleaning product i'm using hey i review cars this is the type of car i bought like Literally, I could be influenced. Mm -hmm. Do you buy anything from an influencer, like using their links or anything? Have you ever been influenced, Ruthie? I got to know. There are two people that have been in our mentorship community in our trainings that sell. One of them sells clothing online and the other sells hair products. And I have bought from both of them. Mm -hmm. And I have researched makeup on Instagram as well. So I take that back. And that is where Instagram wants to go, obviously, mm-hmm. market. Mm-hmm. They want to they want to be a big market that you come to and and use for your purchases. Have you ever purchased something from Amazon from an influencer? No, I haven't yet. Okay, I have only I have watched a few of them, though. I will say I have yeah. dabbled. Okay, <laughs> I I I'm a millennial. Uh-huh. I'm a 90, I'm a 94 baby. And I mm-hmm. love it when people are like, here's this new vacuum I have. It works great. We tested 15 of them Buy it. Mm-hmm. I'm like, great. Thank you. You did all the hard work for me because I'm a researcher and they did it for me. Yes. I'm buying that vacuum with your affiliate link. Sold. I love influencer marketing. Um, yes. Yeah. And so if you can show quickly why mm-hmm. your product works. Yes. Very quickly and succinctly and simply like that. That takes the headache out of it for the rest of us researchers, mm-hmm. not, mm-hmm. you know, trying to decide if we're going to buy this or not. And people will pay for convenience. So keep that yes. in mind. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Users are finding more value and content from people that have similar life experiences to them. So Mm -hmm. while you're developing a long-term relationship, like in the DM, aids in the development of trust, reaching the target audience, driving conversions, and connecting to a larger market is also important as well. So you're just building, even if you're not like an influencer, like 50K plus, I mean, micro-influencers are so... That's what I always strive to be when I was... Um, doing business on Instagram. I want to be a micro influencer. So it's just building that know, like, and trust factor. I know you. Okay. Mm -hmm. I like you. Now Mm -hmm. I trust you. I'm sold. Whatever you say is good is likely good. That's what we're trying to do on Instagram. That's exactly right. I liken it to, so you're going in, let's say a clothing store and they, the people there that work there, they just immediately start hounding you. Mm Mm-hmm. 
that's not really what you want at the time. You just want to browse first. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of how it is when people land on your Instagram account. They just want to browse. They don't need you like, hey, do you want my product? Mm -hmm. (laughs) They don't need that. They Mm -hmm. need to get to know you first and see, you know, what's the, what's the vibe over here? What's Mm -hmm. this person like? And, oh, she's got a poodle. Well, I have a poodle too. (laughs) Hmm. I might have to, uh, you know, vet her a little bit. And what's, oh, she sells makeup. Hmm. Uh And she's my age. That Uh kind of thing is what people are looking for. Right. And maybe this is a millennial thing, but let me know, Ruthie, do not send me a DM and Instagram selling me your product if I just met you and if I don't know you. Yes. Like, don't do it. 100%. I will ignore you. I've actually bought people too. So, because there's no no like and trust factor. To me, you're not an influencer. That's you're it. You're intruding. So, PSA you are not folks. going, yeah. You're not going for the jugular right off the bat. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Don't yes. go there. Don't do that. So influencers are very important. Even if you don't have a lot of followers, be a micro influencer. Just influence the people that you have. Build that no like trust factor over time. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. Yes. And Anything amen. else on that, Ruthie? No, I'm good yes there. And amen. <laughs> I am with you. Okay. Number five. And this is like, this one excites me a lot. Number five is user generated content. We have so much. We We can have a whole episode about this, but we won't. Um, At least not yet. So user generated content, think like consumer generated content is original brand specific content created by your customers. And then they publish it on their social media or on their channels. So it's like your fans, your customers, your clients are creating content for you. That's like Mm -hmm. the dream. Mm -hmm. That is the dream. So it can come from customers, brand loyalists. Um, You could even think of like unboxing videos on TikTok, praise filled posts on Instagram. Your customers are usually the most prominent cohort. You'll look to gain UGC. So whenever I say UGC, user generated content. Mm -hmm. Um, And you can either ask for it or they could organically decide to do it too. There is no other content type that is more authentic than that. Yes, or powerful. Yes. It's it's just a proven fact. It works for me every time I launch. My people come on live with me and talk about Authentic Online Marketing School and how much it's helped them to grow their following, grow their email list, um, grow their communities, pivot into... Uh, a business or Mm -hmm. better, you know, decisions. And so there are many, many formats that they can, that we can use for user generated content. Think of like, it's so basic. It could be as basic as like just an image, social media content, like a tweet or uh, someone shouts, gives you a shout out in stories, videos, Mm -hmm. testimonials, live streams, blog posts, YouTube content, like anything that anyone creates for you Mm -hmm. is user-generated content. Yep. It's such such great social proof. Yes. It's awesome. And people ultimately trust the opinions of other people versus like a sales, like like people trust each other. So it's like the modern day word of mouth. Mm -hmm. User-generated content is the modern day word of mouth. That's exactly it. Yeah. So what are some, what are some um, user generated content tips that you would give us then, Sarah? Mm, I have two. Number one, always ask permission to share their poster story. So if they did a story giving you a shout out or they created a reel wearing maybe a shirt that you sold them or something, or maybe they're using your hair products um, in their reel. Always mm-hmm. ask permission first. Don't just presume you can like share it to yours and say, hey, see, this is my program. This is my shirt. Da, da, da. Always <laughs> share. Always ask permission right. to share. And then always credit. Give credit to the original content creator. So I don't think you necessarily need to do this in like an Instagram story because their name is already like in there. 
But if mm-hmm. you were to, I've seen so many people do this where they just take a post from someone else, mm-hmm. share it to their yeah. feed so that their feed looks beautiful and curated and they like yeah. barely give credit or they don't give credit at all. Rude. I've had that happen. Rude. <laughs> that is so rude. At least yeah. tag the person. At least. And I do want to uh, give a caveat here. If if they have tagged you in their story or in their post, more than likely, yeah, it's going to be okay to sh- to reshare that. Oh, yeah. But you can you can ask just to be sure. But if they've tagged you, probably it's going to be okay. <laughs> right. Yeah, I bet it. I bet that would be just fine. Fifty uh, percent of millennials, KO, base their decision to buy a product on recommendations from their family and friends. So this is where mm-hmm. user-generated content can shine because it's precisely that. It's a personal recommendation. And something that I do constantly with my podcast or with any of my products is when people, like at the end of the podcast, I always say, I give a call to action. And a lot of times it is snap a, a picture of this episode if mm-hmm. if it helped you and share it in your stories and tag me. And people will do that. And then I will, um, oftentimes I'll reshare and tag them back. Not all the time, but mm-hmm. that is just, that does more to get us more downloads than anything else because that is showing these people love our podcast and they mm-hmm. are gaining value from it and they are growing from it. And yeah. so that's what you want to do is give the value so that people are like, hey, this person is worthy of me sharing this. I love this person. I'm going to, or I love her content or I love her product or her podcast or whatever. And so that's, that's the whole thing about marketing. You guys is not yelling by my thing. It is taking the time to connect on Instagram Mm -hmm. and to, to share value content and take the time to explain what you do and what, how this can help someone and then sharing that UGC user generated content. So if you don't have user generated content, this might be the 2023 biggest trend that you need to focus on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. (laughs) And, um, For those of you with like service-based businesses, it's so good to get testimonials Mm -hmm. from your clients. Mm -hmm. Um, And I have like a set of questions that I use every time to get awesome testimonials. Because if you just ask for a testimonial, like, hey, Ruth, can you give me a testimonial how I have to do Pinterest? You'd be like, uh, okay. And then (laughs) you have to come up with content. But if you can like pull it out of them and then ask for permission to use that testimony on social media. So even though you're like kind of creating the post, they Mm -hmm. created the content for Mm -hmm. you. So that's another way that service-based businesses, because a lot of times service-based businesses, you know, we don't have like reviews because we don't have like a product, but you can still write testimonials. And and so uh, another easy thing you could do is just create a survey, um, Mm -hmm. just a quick one. Um, At the end of our survey for Authentic Online Marketing School, I say something like, would you be willing to leave a a review or something like that? And then I will have a fill in the blank. It's actually fill in the blank Mm -hmm. before Mm -hmm. AOMS, I blank. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But since the class, I blank. Mm -hmm. If you can do something that simple, but honestly, If you've been around for a while and sharing your content, it's likely that you have affirmative testimonies. You just don't realize it. They're probably in Facebook groups. They're probably in DMs. They're probably... reviews. Yes. And also in your archive stories, um, if you've reshared what someone has shared about you, it's really a lot easier than you think even in your comments. So Mm -hmm. look, look closely, look right in your yard. You might even have some things there. Yeah. Gotta love user generated content. I do too. Mm -hmm. I love it. It's the best. 
um, Sarah, this has been great for us to have a little review rundown of what we need to do to get our content seen on 2023 of Instagram trends. And I still don't know about that metaverse thing, but I'm going to, we're going to float with it. And if y'all have avatars, I guess you can use those even more now. I've noticed that on Instagram Mm -hmm. that they're kind of, they're kind of pushing that little sticker selfie there. So yeah, I've seen it on Facebook a lot, but it seems like only boomers use them. Isn't that funny? I think that too. And Mm -hmm. I, I just, I don't like it. No. Like I would I don't, never, I would it's never kind of about. funny. And so yeah. I guess that's what they're trying to get us to do over there. Yeah. If know. you are listening to this and you are active in the metaverse and you know what's going on there, send us a DM on Instagram. <laughs> yes. Ruthie, can you tell them the handle? At Authentic Online Marketing Pod. Yes. Please. We want to know. We want to know what's going on there. If we're like, I mean, we might have FOMO if it's actually some cool stuff going on over there. So. Yeah, send us like a a screenshot of your avatar. I'd love to know what you look like. Yeah, we want to we want to see your avatars, or you can share your avatar in your story and tag us. Yeah, that'd be another way. So just you know, get us in the loop here. Also, you know, okay, so that's your call to action if you know more than we do about the metaverse, which (laughs) is not much. Um, And then the other thing is if you, you know. If you really gleaned something from this uh, show today and you would help us out with user-generated content by taking a snapshot of the podcast and sharing it, we would love that. Absolutely. Yes. 100%. All right. Well, thanks for listening today, y'all. Remember to share your own message, your way, in your own authentic voice or avatar.